okay so now we've we've done two steps our third step is to tip all of the new shoots here we've got a, a shoot coming up here and if you don't, if you notice we, and we've talked about this before but the, the the buds are closer together at the tip they're further apart in this midsection here and so we want to eliminate these buds that are close together because again as you're pruning a tree on Gisela rootstock, the thing that we need to be thinking about all the time is how do I reduce the cropping potential of this, of this tree? Because if I leave it alone, as it has been left alone more or less the last couple of years, it's going to overcrop. And an overcrop tree is going to produce poor quality fruit. They're going to be small fruit. It's not, the fruit's not going to be able to be shipped very far. And we've got to avoid that situation. So by me coming in here and removing 20 to 30 percent of that branch, that, that new growth that occurred last year, I'm removing potentially up to 50 percent of the future cropping potential of this branch. And that's what we need to do. We need to be thinking about how do I reduce the overall crop on this tree. It becomes a very simple process of coming in here and just tipping these branches as you see me doing here right now. This will help us stimulate new leaves. These leaves that grow from these points will be large and they'll produce a lot of carbohydrates that will feed the, um, the developing cherries. Here we've got a, a long branch that's hanging down. One of those that should have been taken off earlier, so we'll do that now. Okay, we're just coming in here now and just, just finishing up some of this tipping cut, these, these tipping cuts that we were making. And uh, you can see it's, it's, a, it's a very quick process, uh, but that will help to stimulate new growth and will uh, reduce the future cropping potential of these branches, which is, of course, what we want to do on a Gisla tree. Okay, occasionally we'll want to uh, come back into some older wood here. This is kind of going back to that stub cut that we were making. You see, we've got a lot of spurs coming in here, and I just want to uh, eliminate some of the cropping on this, on this two-year-old wood. So I'm just going to come in here and uh, make that cut like that and make a stub cut. This branch will come up and give us a, an upright branch there, which is uh, what we want on a Gisla 5 rootstock. Okay, now we're to the point where we're going to be talking about step four, which is, which is dealing with the top of this tree, getting the, the top singled out so that we don't have a lot of shade down here at the bottom. Now, it is the middle of winter here, uh, but we might consider doing this actually in late summer because what happens then is that if we, if we deal with this top in late summer, it tends to, to devigorate the top. If I do it now, it tends to put more vigor in this top. I don't want the vigor in the top of the tree. I want the vigor down here in the bottom of the tree. So just keep that in mind that the best time to, to deal with the top of this tree is probably late summer rather than midwinter. What I've got here is just got a, a lot of branches in the top. I'm really at the maximum height that I want to be on this tree. I, I really can't allow this tree to get any taller here, so what I'm going to look for then is a weaker, flatter shoot to cut back to, and I'm going to eliminate some of the, the stronger shoots at the top of this tree. And so I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to start taking out some of these, these branches here that are at the top, and I'm going to leave this branch as my, as my new leader. But I've also got this branch right here that could potentially compete with this, with this branch here. And so in order to prevent that from happening, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to stub it back. I'm also going to tip these, these shoots here, probably just eliminate that one completely. It was just too weak. And so we've, we've singled out the, the top of the tree here. We've got one leader up here that's not being that's not. Uh, getting any competition from these other branches here and we're going to get good light penetration down here to the bottom of this tree which is exactly what we need in order to continue to grow good quality fruit on the ground that can be picked from the ground. 
as we talked about earlier this is a tree that was over that had the potential of being overset uh, because of very light pruning in in the previous years and so we've we've pruned this tree now but there's probably one last thing that we need to do to this tree in order to eliminate some of the cropping potential on this tree and that's that's simply to come along here and remove some of the lower spurs on these branches and it's these lower spurs that are going to be producing the poorest quality fruit and so we just run our our loppers down the bottom of the of the branch just very quickly uh, eliminating some of the potential crop on the lower portions of these branches. And when we get done with this, then we will have a tree that has much less potential of, of overcropping. We should get new vigor back into this tree and we will, should see uh, at least 15 inches of new growth elongate on each one of these branches this next year.